Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Today's really exciting. Um, I get to show you guys uh, what I've been working on lately. And that is uh, something that I honestly never figured that I would be. Um, and that is liner lock pocket knives. Um, you know, I can't really remember my first liner lock pocket knife. Um, I mean, I don't remember what it was, when I got it what I was doing with it. But I do remember picking up a couple of them. It might have been, you know, fairly new or at least new to me. Um, I don't know how long liner locks have been like mainstream or not. Um, I'm 40 years old now. Um, heck, I could have gotten one of the, um, you know, one of the first mass produced types uh, before they got all the bugs worked out of it. I don't know. But Anyways, um, I didn't really care for them all that much because I had a couple of them try to close on my hand while I was working. Um, and that's kind of not such a good thing. I mean, when you're, you know, here's a um, Microtech pocket, uh, liner lock pocket knife. You know, when you got your hand all the way around that knife and, you know, you accidentally, you know, you're... Um, you're cutting a piece of rope up underneath something and you go to pull your hand back and the, t the tip catches something and that thing goes to close. Let's see. Look where that's going. Yeah, that's not such a, not such a good thing. Um, and I just, uh, I mean, I had that happen a couple of times and then, you know, I, I basically, I think I threw the knife away and then uh, went back to a lock back. I think that's what I was carrying at the time. <clears throat> but anyways, um, so ever since then, I've really not been a big old fan of liner locks. Um, and at the time, I think, I think maybe I thought that um, I was actually disengaging the lock, you know, with my hand as I was gripping it somehow. And honestly, I look looking back on it now, I think it was just a, a poorly executed knife, and that's why it tried to close on me several times. Um, speaking of which, uh, this Microtech right here, um, you know, I mean, I picked this up. It's a Microtech SOCOM. I picked it up, um, I want to say for 10 or 20 bucks at uh, the pawn shop because I saw the 154 CM on there, and I thought, well, hey, that's not a bad knife. Well. I looked it up after I purchased it on the internet and come to find out it was pretty high dollar, you know, two, three hundred dollar knife, something like that. And check this out. Yep. I bet you, you just uh, almost peed yourself a little bit when you saw that happen, right? Yeah, that was the, the reason I never really did care for liner locks. And that's a fairly uh, well built and expensive. Um, liner lock for something like that to be happening with. The other thing that I didn't care about liner locks uh, is when you go to close them. Um, now you guys know my views on um, you know knife design in general okay I mean there's it's it's one thing to, to pull a knife out of your pocket um, you know I don't know in the kitchen or in the shop um, you know to 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 cut something, maybe trim your fingernails or something like that, right? When you're you're warm, you're dry, you're you had enough sleep the night before, you're not in a rush, uh, your hands are fairly clean, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Well, in that case, this right here doesn't pose a problem. You see that? Yep. To disengage that lock, I have to put a part of my body in the path of where that blade's going to be coming. All right, like I said, right here, right now, warm, dry, uh, plenty of rest, not in a hurry, nothing like that. You know, okay, well, that might not bother you too much. Well, what happens when <clears throat> you, you know, it's uh, late at night, um, it's 10 degrees outside, and somebody calls you up, they've, uh, they've got a frozen water line or something, right? So you bundle up, you jump in your truck, you run down there. Uh, you check and you find out that uh, the, the heat tape's bad on a water line, right? Well, now you're cold, right? Because it's 10 degrees outside or less. It's late at night. Maybe you just got woke up. Maybe you fell asleep for 30 minutes and then they woke you up. Okay, so you're cold. You're not very well rested. You're in a hurry because it's cold outside. You want to go ahead and get the job done. 
um, and then get back home and go back to bed. It's dark, you can't really see. Um, you know, you're working in a foot of snow, your hands are wet, numb, cold, you know, your, uh, your dexterity isn't where it should be. That right there is where that would cut your thumb. At least cut, I mean, you know, maybe it'd go through your, your thumbnail. That right there is the part where good knife design comes into play, is can you use that knife when you are tired, cold, hungry, in a hurry, uh, you can't see nothing, um, you know, that's when uh, good knife design really comes into play, right? So, that's why I never did like liner locks, right? Well, you guys know my love affair with the Benchmade 940, okay? One of those knives that you can open and close either hand. You don't have to put a part of your body in the path of the blade closing. I've used this knife in all those situations that I just told you about. Um, hands muddy, bloody, greasy, uh, you know, dirty, all that kind of stuff. And never had this, this knife fail me. Well, the other day, <clears throat> I was setting my boy up. Um, he's going to start working with me now. And I didn't really want to give him a, you know, a $200 Benchmade. Um, you know, first couple of knives, you know, first of all, that kind of spoils him. Second of all, you know, that's an awful lot of money for something that he might lose or he's going to break the tip off or, you know, do whatever with, right? So my travel knife, um, I picked this one up a while back. It's a Kershaw uh, Chill, all right? $20, $30, I think I gave 20 or 30 bucks for, for his. And then I set his up with, uh, this is actually mine, uh, a thumb stud, um, move the pocket clip around, put an edge on it, all that kind of stuff. For 20, 30 bucks, this is my travel knife, you know. So if I'm going to be flying somewhere, I'll stick this in my luggage. And if the, the airline loses my luggage, well, then I'm not going to, you know, lose any sleep over losing this like I would, you know, my beloved Benchmade. So I'm looking at this knife in one of my videos. I said, you know, I might have to make him one. And then I got thinking about it, and I thought, you know, that's actually a nice knife. I mean, it's, you know, narrow. It's fairly thin stock. Um, the grind on it, um, it's still a bit thick, but it's not too bad. And I've never had this knife fail on me. Of course, I've never really used it all that hard. So I got to thinking about it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to make one of those and just see what I, you know, see what I like. Because what I really like about this one is that it's got the flipper, okay? Now, I don't generally open this knife with the flipper because um, it, it's not very uh, positive, you know. You've got to add a wrist flick to it to get it to open, and it's kind of flashy to open like that you know I mean if you've got non knife people around you um, that is uh, kind of unnerving to them and a lot of times you just don't need to pop it out that fast but that flipper right there solves almost everything that I don't like about the liner lock okay see that that flippers in the way even though a part of my body is in the blade path as long as you get your thumb up in there tight, that flipper hits your thumb and it won't let it close it until you move your thumb out of the way. That, all of a sudden, I really like. So I put a thumb stud on it just because my muscle memory is set up for a thumb stud. So with that being the case right there, with that flipper fixing that, now I thought about, well, reliability. Well, I've never really had this Kershaw fail. We'll try it. It doesn't doesn't fail um, now I'm sure if you really whale on it or if you clamp it up in a vise and you know really uh, uh, come down on it you know it'll fail I mean everything that has moving parts including us will fail sooner or later but that uh, gives me much more uh, I'm much happier about it you know not failing with light taps like that so a tap like that like I said, if you're cutting rope up underneath something or insulation, whatever, and you come back and the tip catches something, you know, it's not likely to close on you. So, I already had some books, but I went ahead and ordered up more books and uh, more DVDs. Um, and it, uh, it's been... <coughs> 
<clears throat> I don't know, a month or so since I just start, decided to start making these. And so we'll show you off a little bit here. So we've got... Now you guys, if you know um, anything about knife books and everything, this one's going to make you drool right here. The Tactical Folding Knife by Bob Teruzula. I actually had this book. Um, I picked it up, I can't remember where, for like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks. Um, and I wanted, I've seen copies of this book go for several hundred dollars. Um, absolutely amazing book. Um, even though he doesn't really cover flippers, um, which I do like, uh, it's still a, a really good book um, for the construction of liner locks. Um, Blade's Guide to Making Knives, one, two, and three. They've all got uh, good articles in there um, on liner locks. Uh, these two have got articles by Rick Dunkerley, and this one has got uh, an article by uh, Alan, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, Elise Schwitz. Anyways, um, excellent articles in there. And then... DVDs are amazing. These DVDs are fairly expensive. Um, I think this one right here by Don Robinson, um, I think it was on the inexpensive side, like 40, 50 bucks. Uh, the Chris Crawfords uh, by Alan Elishwitz. Uh, you got design or liner lock design, basic tacticals, and advanced tacticals. Um, I want to say the whole set was uh, maybe 50, 60 bucks a piece, something like that. Um, and while I'm not really into tactical type knives, I mean, I'm a handyman, outdoorsman, knife maker type. You know, I mean, I don't fight with a knife. Um, you know, so honestly, knives like this one right here, you know, with quarter inch thick stock. Um, aggressive jimping, you know, the, uh, the tactical profiles and everything, they just, they, they, they just don't do it for me. Um, but excellent, excellent videos. Um, and then one of my favorites here is the Persian style liner lock by Rick Dunkerley. Um, his really goes into uh, making uh, a liner lock pocket knife without a milling machine, which is kind of cool because you start getting into the, you know, making of pocket knives and everything, and it seems like everybody uses a milling machine and a uh, surface grinder. Oh, speaking of that, we'll show off the surface grinder right quick. I did end up building a uh, surface grinding attachment. It's got the little doohickey that moves this up. And then this, you know, it's a magnetic table. You mount your, your work piece in there and then you rotate it underneath or move it back and forth up underneath the belt as it's going. It does a pretty good job. I mean, you know, this is my old uh, um, three-wheel uh, treadmill grinder that I built out of an old treadmill and pop cans and extra aluminum. And, you know, I think I've got 100 bucks into the grinder. I think this attachment... Um, I want to say I gave uh, like 300 bucks or so for for the parts. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. Had to order them from China. Um, let's see. I think uh, SGA. Um, so do a Google on surface grinder attachment, but it's it's shortened. So just type in SGA, like blade forms, and you'll find um, instructions on how to build those. They're really cool. Anyways, and then the other big investment, I guess, which was only about 20 bucks or 30, is that light box. Um, it's an LED one, so, I mean, I've never worked with a light box before. Honestly, I can't really draw all that well, but this thing, um, it actually helped me do not so bad. There was my last drawing right there, um, and that was for this pattern ah can't get the there we go I haven't uh, I haven't hardened this one yet I think I'll probably do that tomorrow maybe um, but that light box is really dang cool it's only about no oh, 
half inch thick or so so it sits real flat on your your kitchen table um you know and lets you uh do the drawing so that you can see how all the parts uh interchange with each other it's really cool um so once i got all this stuff and i started reading and watching all the videos plus of course youtube i started making some patterns um i took that that kershaw chill and took it apart and made a pattern out of it um, there was a couple of things that i didn't like about it so i started changing it i think that went to this one um, i wanted to make it larger and that ended up with that knife right there which is a really nice knife um, but it's a little bit on the large side um, you know too you know it's 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 fairly long from tip to butt uh, so of course I wanted a shorter one and to see if I couldn't change a couple other things to it um, so we went to I think it was this one this pattern here and that made that knife which was pretty dang close um, but still needed to make some changes to it so then went to the next one and the next one and the next one and finally ended up with this one and that's what we'll show you next So, uh, no, I'll show you one, this one right here. So, I really like the flippers, right? Because that flipper, um, it gives you another way to open it, but it protects your thumb when you go to close it, right? But, I know a lot of folks probably aren't going to like having that flipper in the back. But, that flipper is what protects your thumb when you go to close it. So, I came up with this one right here. Um, and it's a pretty nice one. Got dual thumb studs, no flipper, but it still has an open back. And what that allows me to do is just make a short flipper. So, even though you can't flip it, you still get the benefit of, you know, that flipper tab or nub, I guess you could call it, protecting your thumb when you go to close the thing. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead. I think we're at 17 minutes already now. Well, you guys just saw I pulled this out of my pocket, right? I've had this one right here in my pocket now. Well, this one or the other one or the prototype that I made um, to start bringing these out. One of those has been in my pocket every day for the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. And you just saw what I pulled out of my pocket, right? That is about the highest level of praise that I can give to a design as a knife maker. I mean, what's in my pocket is what I really like, right? That right there. This is the last, um, this pattern right here. That is just about as close as I could get so far to a perfect pocket knife. I mean, so much so that I'm not carrying the 940, all right? Now, granted, I made this out of some pretty Damascus. I think it's... Uh, 280-ish layer, uh, 1095 and 15 and 20 with some 100-ish layer, uh, 1095 and 15 and 20 bolsters, um, just some plain old uh, cow shin bone uh, bone scales, stainless steel pocket clip, um, just got a, a 1095 uh, back bar in it that's built, been um, uh, skeletonized on the inside to reduce weight. It's running on uh, phosphorus bronze um, uh, washers. Um, and this one, actually, instead of using titanium for the, the, the liners, I went with some 17-4, uh, I believe, stainless from Jantz, uh, 50 thousandths thick. Um, and it seems to be doing a pretty good job, job so far. I can't decide if I like it or the, the titanium better. But that's why I built this knife is, is to, to try it out. But it does have the flipper. Now, bear in mind, my fingers are, uh, my thumb uh, especially is kind of tore up from, uh, I was trying out a modification to the detent ball on this one um, to make the, the flip much more positive. And I had, had it all screwed up when I first started it because it was the first one. So my thumbs kind of tore up from doing that. But you can flip it out with the flipper and you can pop it out with a thumb stud which I really like. Um, <clears throat> you can do it with either hand. 
pop it out, close it, thumbs, uh, the flipper hits, close it. Now I'm not very good flipping with my, my left thumb, so, ah, there we go. I just don't do that very often. Um, so the requirements that I wanted this knife to do, okay, was pretty much what I wanted the 940 to do, which only you get an extra opening option. So I wanted to be able to open it with the flipper and then close it one-handed, both hands, okay? Flipper and a thumb stud because my muscle memory is set for a thumb studs because I've been carrying a bench, bench made for so long. Um, <clears throat> I wanted it to be able to be opened slowly, okay? So let's say you go to Mini Mart, right? And you go to get one of those, uh, you know, the coffees or the cappuccinos that I like so much that are almost 100% sugar but a little bit of caffeine in there a little bitty hole in the top of the cup isn't big enough to let air in you know to when you when you go to drink it so generally speaking when I buy one of those I pull my pocket knife out and I you know open it up a little bit stick it in the top of that cup turn it pull it out close it and then put it back in my pocket well, there's a whole bunch of times that you want to do something like that, you know, where there's other people around. They might not be knife people, and so you don't want to make them uncomfortable, right? You know, I mean, can you imagine if you were in Mini Mart and, um, you know, you wanted to make that hole in the top of your coffee cup and you went like that right quick and there was some, you know, person that wasn't a knife person right next to you? Heck, they'd be calling the cops, you know, I mean, it'd, it'd be awful, right? Or, you know, uh, you guys know I did nine years as the PTO president at my boy's uh, elementary school. Not that he did nine years at an elementary school. It was K through six. But I started when my daughter was uh, in elementary school. She was there. Let's see. I started three years before she left. And then my boy got in there. So I ended up doing nine years there. Well, nine years in an elementary school, you know, there's plenty of times you're going to need to to cut, open up a box or cut a piece of string or, you know, sharpen a pencil or something right like that. And I'm really not going to leave my knife in the car when I go into the school. So, but, you know, you want to be discreet when you use your knife. Um, well, you just do. And so, you know, being able to open a knife slowly, you know, just enough to be able to to get your work done and not upset people around you is, I think it's a good thing. Anyway, so I wanted to be able to open it in two different ways and be able to open it slowly. So with you can either open it with the thumb stud slowly or this one, you can actually grab the blade and then just roll your thumb out on it. So, or, you know, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could use, you know, two hands, you know, so it's a very, um, um, nice way of opening up a knife and getting it into your work. The other thing I wanted was to keep roughly the same overall dimensions as the 940. Maybe a hair larger, which this one's pretty close to that. Um, we got about the same blade width. Well, that one's got that uh, Damascus blade I made for it. But it's pretty close to the original. Um, we got about the same length, the same width, um, roughly the same thickness. This one's a little bit thicker because it doesn't have the inset uh, uh, mini liners that the 940 has. Um, but it's got that nice narrow blade that turns really well and cuts that's solid. There's no holes inside the blade. So like when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, you don't get peanut butter and jelly stuck inside uh, the holes inside the blade, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean out. It's got a nice tapered pointy point. Look at there. It's uh, catching my catching my fingerprints. The, uh, the first ones of these, this one was actually the first one, um, it's 330 seconds. Um, and I really like 330 seconds, but I wanted to have a little bit more room to play um, on the lock surfaces. So after I made, I think, four of them out of 330 seconds, this one is eighth inch stock. Um, and I think that's about as thick as I would want to go for a using knife. Remember, this is, 
this is an everyday carry using knife here. You know, this isn't a tactical knife. It's not a fighting knife. Um, you know, I mean, I don't fight with a knife. So, um, well, let me take that back. When I do fight with a knife, it gets ugly. That knife fights me too much. I will put it in a forge, heat it up, and twist it into a pretzel, and then, uh, you know, toss it into the junk pile. Or I'll put a fresh 36 grit belt on a, the two horse grinder back there on the highest speed and feed that thing point first until it's a pile of dust and then do a dance on the dust. Um, but as far as fighting like people, I'm not in that line of work. You know, I mean, I'm not a cop or uh, a uh, soldier or anything like that. How in the heck would I know what would make a good fighting knife versus a bad fighting knife? You know, this is a an everyday carry for opening mail and uh, making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, cutting a string, um, you know, replacing heat tape on a water line, um, dressing out a, you know, I would do an elk with that. I've done elk with, uh, with smaller than that, but dressing out a deer, antelope, elk, rabbit, um, you know, wild turkey, uh, fishing, opening up or uh, cleaning trout, uh, you know, just a, a nice general use, everyday carry type of knife. So I wanted to keep all that in there. Um, so anyway, so this is eighth inch stock, um, but I did give it a full flat grind. So it goes clear up. I think it actually ends about right there. And then when I hand sanded it, I kind of blended that in, um, you know, just to make it look nicer. And it's probably, I'm guessing that's ten thousandths or less at the shoulder of the edge. Oh, I was wrong. It's eleven thousandths thick at the where the sharpening marks end. So it's a really nice cutter. Um, yeah. So that's like I said, it rides on the the phosphorus bronze uh, washers, which. You know, I've worked with bearing knives before, um, knives that had bearings in them, and I really didn't care for them. Um, I was just at uh, one of the pawn shops the other day, and the guy pulled one out, and he said, man, look how fast this is. And honestly, when I opened it, it felt kind of gritty. Um, you know, you could feel each, I mean, if you went to open it slow, you could feel those bearings rolling inside of it. And he said it was a, a knife that I didn't recognize, but he said it was a pretty high dollar knife, two, three hundred dollars, something like that. Um, but you could feel them bearings as they as they roll across the steel. And I didn't care for that. Um, he actually showed me how you could get it closed and then shake it and it would it would close by itself. Now this one I'm having to shake pretty dang hard to get to do that. His, um, you got it to about there and you gave it a tap and it fell closed by itself, which I didn't particularly care for that either. I'd much rather have some resistance as I go to close it. I mean, a little bit of resistance, but still some of it there just so that, you know, you know that blade isn't going to fall shut on your fingers. Um, the, uh, the washers is what my 940 has had. You know, I mean... Every once in a great while, I might strip that knife down to clean inside those washers. Um, you know, if I'd been doing something really, if that knife was pretty much so gunked up that it couldn't close it or didn't want to close it the way it was, would I strip it down? The rest of the time, you know, put it up underneath some running water, you know, wash it out, work it back and forth, maybe loosen up the pivot for a little bit while you're doing that. And then while the pivot's loose, give it a couple of drops of oil, work the oil in there, and then go ahead and set your um, your pivot tension. Um, if the knife, like these 940s, honestly, they probably could have used a drop of blue Loctite, but I never really bothered. Um, I'd much rather have a knife that was a little bit on the loose side versus, uh, you know, no play at all or so tight that uh, that it wasn't smooth. Anyways, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so uh, I've got two more of these. They're already made up. These are with uh, titanium liners, um, and they look mighty rough right now. But I promise you, they won't they won't stay that way for long. 
Um, I'll probably go ahead and finish them out oh, this week or next week. I've got some, uh, some kitchen knives and stuff to make also. Um, but anyway, so I'm really, really dang excited to be, to finally have made a pocket knife that I like so much that it has replaced my 940 in my pocket. And that's really, really high praise coming from a knife maker. Anyways, excited enough that I think I just ordered up, well, I, I don't think I just ordered up. I actually did order a, um, a mini mill from Grizzly. Um, found one, the smallest unit that they had, uh, I think is going to fit on that bench over there, just barely. Um, and it uh, takes a number three Morse taper uh, collet on the, the stem. And that's the same size as uh, the head on my uh, my old South Bend 9x36. So I won't have to buy new collets for it. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Um, I'll put it to use on these liner locks. And I think with it, I'll probably be able to do a little bit better job on the slip joints and, and the lockbacks also. So anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're after one of these, um, you know, either one of these basic, which these are quite a bit lighter. Um, you know, with the, the G10 full scales instead of the bolsters and the, the handle, but, you know, whichever way. Um, if you're interested in one, go ahead and uh, you can go to my website, uh, www.caltoncutlery.com. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. You can go there, and there's a, a contact us uh, page on there. You click on that, you know, type out your message, put in your email address, and then it'll get to me, and then I'll get back to you. Um, to let you know how long the wait's going to be um, and you can tell me what you're after and I give you a, a rough ballpark of the, the price on it. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in one of those, give me a buzz and uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.